Hello, SPEDFORMS users. I'm Diane McCarran, one of the staff at SPEDFORMS, and today we're going to talk about SPEDFORMS 2.0. Specifically, we're talking about the hamburger menu and navigation features, the dashboard features of 2.0, and some forms menu and forms basics. If you go into SPEDFORMS 2.0 for the first time, you might see a hamburger menu, and we call it a hamburger menu because of this three-lined tool right here. And it's this hamburger menu here is open. You can see we've got icons and areas where you can move to throughout the system. Here you can see the hamburger menu is closed in that all we see is the icons. Same icons that we saw over here, but we don't have the words. This is when you would be using a small handheld device and you didn't want all this screen space taken up by just the navigation features within SPEDFORMS. So it's possible that when you go to your profile, you could always keep that hamburger menu open by clicking this under Educator Setup, Profile, or if you really doesn't, don't matter and you'll be using some smaller handheld devices and also laptops, then you can just keep this unchecked and it will automatically adjust based on the size of the screen that you're using. So this is the first significant difference between 2.0 and 1.0 and we call this our hamburger menu. If you have a closed hamburger menu and you can't remember what those icons are, go ahead and just mouse over them and it will pop open and tell you what that is. If you want to navigate to that page, just click on the icon. Some basics about logging in and out of 2.0. In version 2.0, you see that blue person icon the red arrow is pointing to. And if you click on that blue person icon, you will get educator setup, messages, and you see sign out there. So that's the place that you can sign out when you're finished using SPEDFORMS. And we always encourage that for confidentiality reasons and so that someone else who might want to be working on that particular student on that particular page can also have access. So the sign out button for 2.0 is in the basic same location as you used to have it in 1.0, but that was called the quit button. Logging out 2.0 and 1.0, again, quite similar. Look for it in the same space. If you want to navigate to your dashboard and you are on a form that has the hamburger menu, so that is the newer form, you use the hamburger menu, which is on the left-hand side, and you click to wherever it is you want to go. Now, not all of our forms have been changed to version 2.0 yet. And so if you are in a form where you don't see that hamburger menu, but rather you see our old go to drop down menu, that's how you're going to get back to your dashboard. Go to your educator students or wherever else it is that you want to, to move to, but that's the navigation feature in our old forms. There's a number of ways to navigate from one form to another within SPEDFORMS 2.0. On the top screen, that is you see a large green oval, you see what we call our breadcrumbs. So we had clicked into Johnny Appleseed's files. We had gone to SPEDFORMS. And then we'd gone to Johnny Appleseed's prior written notice, parental consent and objection form. You follow the breadcrumbs to navigate within the forms of a single student. So when we're in here for Johnny Appleseed and you want to go back to his entire list of forms, just click on the on click backwards and use the sped forms word there. So you follow the breadcrumbs back. Another way of navigating from form to form, and this time we're in the file for Thick S. Bacon. And maybe I want to find all the prior written notices that I've written for Thick S. Bacon. So up in that search button, 
or search bar up at the top where the red arrow is pointing, put in prior written, and you will get a pop-up list of all of the prior written notices. Or maybe you want to find all the notice of team meetings. Start by typing notice of, and you're going, you don't have to have an exact match, but you you get it started and it will pop in all of the notice of team meetings. There, the second arrow in our row is a pointing to our breadcrumbs. We of course can use those as we said in the slide before. Or if we look under that hamburger menu, on the left-hand side of the screen, we see SPED forms. And then we see Notice of Team Meeting. And we see that we are in Thick S Bacon. So you could just click backwards on the hamburger menu, click backwards on the breadcrumbs, or click in the search feature to move from form to form for Thick S Bacon. Now, if you want to navigate from one form in a student to that same type of form for another student, for example, if you're writing a lot of team meeting notices because you've got conferences coming up, so you go into Fitzwilliam Darcy in this case, click on team meeting notice, complete the form. Hopefully, you've created team member list so that you can very efficiently fill in that team member list um, for the invitation to the to the meeting. But once you've finished Fitzwilliam Darcy and you've saved it, then you can find that green arrow or green circle with the backwards and forwards arrows right up here. This is our switch student button. If I click on that switch student button, I'm activating a dialog pop-up box. So now I was in Fitzwilliam Darcy and now I want to go to another student. So I type in what I know, first name, last name, maybe I know the student ID, maybe I don't, and I hit that search button. Then you're going to get a display of students who match your search that you have access to will show up. So then you can go ahead and click on that person that you want and that's going to take you straight to that team meeting notice because that's what we were in in the past student. So the navigation there just takes you straight from one form to the same form for another student. As I said, not all SPED forms, forms have been converted to 2.0 format. You will still need to know how to navigate in the, using the 1.0 functionality during this period of time. And that's that grow to drop down menu that you're going to want to use. All right. Now let's talk about our new special ed dashboard in our version 2.0. If I go to that or to get to that, if you're following along, if you're in something that has that hamburger menu, go ahead and click on dashboard. If you're in an older version and you have 2.0 enabled, go ahead and click on Educator Students. And that will take you to your special education dashboard. Dashboards for any of our forms, whether it's MA, 504, uh, MTSS, health forms, all of those work in a very similar fashion. So once you know the system, you kind of know the system. So under that blue person icon up in the upper right hand corner, you've got, you can go to educator setup, which is where you can adjust your profile, create your team member list, um, other things there. You can go to messages, which we'll talk about at a later time. You can see a list of special education, a, a list of districts that use SPED forms. It would be easier to show you a list that doesn't use SPED forms as it's only about seven traditional districts. But that there's a list there. There's a pick up button and a sign out button. And sign out is when you log out or quit. We will talk more about some of those other functions later. You also see a sort by drop down menu. That's very similar to the names across the top of the columns that we see. I can sort by plan 
or I can click by plan here and sort. I can sort by school or I can click on school and sort. I can sort by grade or click on grade and sort by grade. So all of that is a tool to learn so that you can sort and resort and resort your list to serve your needs of whatever particular thing you happen to be doing at that time. You can see white rows and grade rows. Um, there, there may be difficult for you to see on the video, but easier for you to see when you're working in the system. The white rows mean you have access to that student's file. You can look at the file. But for the students who are in grade rows, you are that case manager, plan manager, IEP manager, whatever you call it, you are the person that's in charge of that person's forms. So that is an, a tool to help you quickly and efficiently find who you're looking for. Are you the case manager or are you, do you just have access to the student? If you see a little I next to the gear, that means the student is inactive. So you can easily tell if this is a student that has once been served but is no longer receiving special education services on your list. You also can see sometimes the law symbol and a health symbol. Those some districts choose to use, not all districts. And they also can determine when those, those symbols are used, what they mean, what they stand for. So look to your district for guidance if indeed they are using those symbols and if so, what those symbols stand for. There's also a birthday cake. Obviously, that means it's near or the, the day of the child's birthday. On the far right-hand side, you see an orange, green, and red icon. We used to have orange, green, and red smiley faces. And people really liked those. And they kind of are mourning the loss of them. But individuals with visual difficulties has a hard time telling the difference between an orange, green, and red smiley face. So we still have orange, green, and red. but And they still mean the same thing. But they are in different shapes. So it's easier for people with visual difficulties. If you click on those icons, they're going to give you some information. So satisfactory or someone that was checked in green, it's going to tell you the case manager, the disability, the age, the years and months until the eval is due, the time until the meeting is due, and that there are no issues. But if there was something that was in red, it's going to mean there's a problem here. Again, case manager, disability, age, how long until that eval is due, and how long it's been since there was the last annual meeting. And so it's going to give you the information of why is there something that is red. If something is in orange, it's going to tell you what's coming up that's due. Another thing that you might look for, if your district uses the form, a notice of agreement that a three-year reval is not needed, longest form ever, longest title for a form ever, I should say, if your district chooses to use that and has it turned on, and if that applied to the particular student, you would that would be indicated here and it would tell you when it was sent. And more information here explains when and how we would use that information. Finally, there's a search box up at the top. You can go ahead and click the name of the students. You can just start and it's going to, it doesn't have to have an exact complete match and it will pull up students that are similar and you can choose so you can search that very long list of students you're case managing or serving and find the, their list of forms. The last thing is a quick links button over here. If you see this little upside down chevron beside the icon, if you click and open that, you will see quick links to all of these different forms. Now this is most useful for Part B students. We are working on a Part C um, 
version of this, but it's not completed yet. One of the things that I really find helpful here is a quick link to the communication log. We'll talk about the communication log in later training opportunities, but that's one where everybody will want to access and keep this up to date. And so this is two clicks. You drop down the Chevron and you click into the log and you're right there versus having to go deeper into the system. Along the left-hand side, under that hamburger menu, is something we call filter and refine. It seems like a filter here, right? Or a funnel. A filter can be your friend or it can be your foe. They allow you to you know, refine your dashboard. Maybe you only want to see the students that are managed by you. Maybe you only want to see students that are MA eligible. Maybe you want to hide all those inactive students that are on your list. Or maybe you serve in a district or a co-op and you only want to see a certain district. Or maybe you serve multiple schools and you want to see a certain one or a grade level. All of these are filters that you can engage. And that's truly helpful when you're working with students and uh, working through a set of tasks that you have in front of you. The problem is a filter can be your foe if your district has it set so the filters always remain. It pops up the next time you get into the system. Whatever filter you last had shows up again. And if that is the case, sometimes we know filters can be our foe. It happens every single year. We get some panicked phone calls after the Thanksgiving break. People were working in their system before Thanksgiving. They had set their filters. They did a lot of work. They logged out of SPED forms and they came back. Not on Thursday, because that was Thanksgiving. Not on Friday, that's a, typically a day off. Not Saturday, not Sunday. Maybe not even Monday. They finally went back to work on forms on Tuesday and they felt like they were missing some of their kids. It's because their filters were still in place. This happens every year, don't be embarrassed. But if you think you've lost some kids, that's very, very unlikely. Go ahead and clear your filters and you'll find them all back. Plan managers and case managers with administrative rights can grant other personnel access to student files. So if you want to share John Snow with another person, maybe they need to do an evaluation assessment. Maybe they need to add some accommodations. Maybe they need to read John's file for a reason. And you need to add somebody to so they can see those files. Navigate to your SPEDFORMS dashboard. Click on the name of the student who you want to share. And then you can see we were sharing John B. Snow and go down to sharing and transfer. So go ahead and click sharing and transfer. When the forms menu opens and you've clicked sharing and transfer, you're going to get a pop-up screen. And you can see who currently has access to the student. The building administrator has access, but they can't write in the forms. There's no edit given to this person. The plan manager is mint condition. Negative five degrees, Claire Frazier and testing teacher all have access to John Snow and they all have edit access so they can write in the forms. But if you want to add somebody else, you look over to the side and you click View, either view all or whichever group seems most appropriate to find the person whom you wish to share the student record. Once you've found that person, go ahead and click on that person's name and they are going to pop over into this list. And then decide, do they get added access or don't they? And if these are medical records that they're going to be sharing, then then click that so then the files don't transfer if the child would move to a new school district. So in this case, we could 
add, we could click on somebody and add them right over to this. Maybe it's a school psychologist that we found. Second time we hit the share button and they pop right over and then we can give them edit access if they're going to be writing in the students' reports. All right, once you were here, you're in something that kind of looks like to, like the old version, right? You are. This, this particular page hasn't been updated to 2.0 yet. So just go under the go to drop down menu and click on sped dashboard and it will take you back to that new version of the dashboard right here. So now what if you're not the case manager and you want access to be shared with you for a student? You are the speech clinician and you're going to do some new assessments on this student. You need to request access to that student to be shared with you. So this you're just going to find in that hamburger menu on the left hand side. You just click the find request arrow or find request button indicated by that green arrow there. You type in the name and any first, last, and Mars number if you have it, or LSID number if that's listed, and, and hit search. So the students that match your criteria will be instantly displayed. And then if you find the right person, you hit request. And so a message then is going to be automatically sent to the student's case manager. And that message is going to pop up. We talked about this in an earlier training episode. Messages are here. That message will be shown right here and you can click on that. You click open messages or you click uh, pickups and you, it signals you to either pick up a student or to share a student. And then once you've done that, it would look like this. Once it's done, then you can just hit the delete. You don't want this whole list of messages that you've had throughout the year to be here because it'll be a, it could be a, a very long list. But read and act on all those messages as quickly as possible because somebody's waiting. Somebody's waiting to see that student's files. Now, if you're going to transfer case managers, again, it's only plan managers and SPED forms administrators that have the ability to transfer to case managers in some districts. In other districts, they allow um, other people to do that. But as a professional courtesy, first, finalize all the forms before transferring a student record. Because if you share something, transfer something before it's been finalized, we're not going to have the newest version. So in this case, Yolanda is going to move to a new district or is moving to a new case manager in the same district. So you click sharing and transfer just as we did before. And we saw this, we've done this, it's within the school system. But if you want to send this kid to a new play manager, go ahead and click this button. Then type in the new plan manager that this child is supposed to be sent to and hit submit. And then you're going to see a list. If it's only people within your district, it's going to be here. But if there's a, but if there are more people that have that same name, more plan managers that are in remote districts or districts that are not yours, they will be listed here. To complete the transfer process, choose send once you have found the right person. All right, we're going to talk about the forms. So we've been talking about that dashboard and how that works. Now we're going to get a little more specific into forms. So to work on a student's file and work on the forms within that file, all you need to do is go to your dashboard and then click on the student's name. Once you click on that student's name, you will have a list of uh, file folders. In this case, this is a Part B child. So we've got referral and evaluation, service plan file folders, enrollment and attendance, and the rest. Think of these forms 
as a filing cabinet that contains a lot of folders. And each folder contains forms relevant to the title of the folder. But these are just the same sort of thing electronically. So if I want to find forms that are related to dismissal, obviously I'm going to go to this file folder. If I want to find forms related to service plan, I'm going to go to this folder. When you open the forms, sometimes you will see these symbols. If you click on the brown question mark, you're accessing some additional just-in-time guidance. Generally, it's documents uh, tied back to the MDE. If you click on SP, it's going to be this form in Spanish, Hmong or Somali. So not all forms have been translated. The, the very necessary ones have been. So notice of team meeting in this case has been transferred to Spanish, Hmong, and Somali, as has the IEP. Lots of forms have word processing tools built in. These are the same as any other word processing tool that you have used. The only thing we would recommend is that you not change the font size or the font as that could result in forms that have very different looking page, from page to page and being very inconsistent when printing. Throughout the system, through many forms, you see drop down menus. I like to think of these drop down menus as story starters. You have the option to type your own words into the text box in many of them. You can select a response or multiple responses from the drop down menus and edit those. And you can also, some districts have preferences set to block educators from editing any of the drop downs. So this is one of those times again where we think about what's the district guidance here. Make sure you know. You can see that the name of the child was pulled in. The child's name is pulled in by, mag by magic words, if you will, capital C, capital H, capital L, capital D. So if you use CHLD in all caps, it's going to pull in the preferred name, if there is one listed for the child first, or it's going to pull in the first name. For example, we have uh, Richard Castle as one of our fake kids, but we say Rich is his preferred name. So when this would be finished for Richard Castle, Rich would be the, the, the name there. It would say Rich is at risk for not reaching grade level, etc. So you see drop downs. You're going to use the little upside down triangle there. You also see them with a, with a chevron or an upside down chevron. In this case, it's the drop downs for MCAs, MCAs with accommodations listed. And all of these accommodations, these are not editable because these are set by the state in the testing protocols. So we have these accurate and up to date. You don't want to be changing these. You're going to be using these just as they are. And you can add as many of them as you need by clicking the add button. If you added one by mistake, you go ahead and delete it using the delete button. In some places, you will see text boxes, and you'll see these little tiny um, lines at the right-hand corner. You can make this box significantly bigger by dragging, by grabbing that right-hand corner and dragging it downward. Even if you didn't and you typed a whole lot of things in here, it would all print so that you could successfully see all of it. Here's a quick tip: when you are typing and you click that enter key, you know, that, that return, if you will, at the end of a line, if you hit enter, it's going to automatically have a double space, double space here. But if you click shift and enter, you just get a single space. SPED forms is working to update forms to the newer version. Some forms are converted, some forms aren't but the information moves seamlessly from place to place. Thank you, and we look forward to you 
in our next training.